Well, I was hoping the smaller calibers would work and it wouldn't come to this, but I just know I'll get raked in the comments if I don't at least try it. So here it is, the 50 BMG. It worked. <laughs> What's going on everybody? Welcome back. All right guys, today's video is going to be kind of a continuation on a video we did last week shooting 50 cal primers, which was actually a part two to the flare gun video. So I guess this is a three-parter. Either way, uh, last week we made a video shooting 50 cal primers with BB guns and 22s, and I had several comments requesting that I try this, so that's what we're going to do. So the request was, since we know BB guns can ignite primers, that I try loading several cartridges in a tube, tip to butt, like this, and see if we can cause a chain reaction. And it actually made me think of a more realistic scenario that doesn't involve a BB gun, and that is magazine tubes, like you find on a lot of lever action rifles, causing this chain reaction of NDs by dropping the rounds on top of each other. So the best way to explain this to you guys is just to show you really quick. So this is my Henry lever action 4570, obviously a very good looking rifle. Now this one actually has a side gate as well as the magazine tube, but a lot of them do just have the tubes. And when you load these things, you're dropping bullets at a pretty good rate of speed right on top of each other. And obviously, you know, if the bullets are sharp and pointy, uh, that could cause a serious accident. Now, most 4570s are flat nose bullets, and I almost wonder if it's to prevent exactly that. But if you were to do this with a 30 6 or a 50 BMG, could you accidentally cause a chain reaction inside the magazine tube. Now, unfortunately, we are not gonna use 50 BMG for this video. Number one, they're about $10 a piece and I've wasted enough of those already. And number two, as we learned from the last video, there's a lot of powder in a 50 cal and I wanna keep this video safe. So here's our setup. We have quite a bit to explain here. So I got a four foot metal pipe, which is longer than any magazine tube I've ever seen. I capped it off with a metal cap so the bullet will not give. It's you know not gonna hit dirt, it's gonna hit hard metal and then stuck it into the ground a few inches and we have a 30-06 sitting on the bottom of that metal pipe and another 30-06 sitting up here. I thought that was a good caliber. It's you know plenty heavy, uh, big, pointy, all of the above. I wrapped it in goon tape because the pipe, as you can see, is just a little bit bigger than the shell casing and I want it to fall evenly so it actually hits the primer. Got a clip on the bullet. I'm gonna go behind the tree, pull this string. That should let the bullet drop freely and hopefully smack the primer of the bullet that's already sitting on the bottom. Now I'm at least 6% sure this pipe will contain the blast, but just in case it doesn't, I'm gonna go behind the tree and pull this string. I do like to be safe, despite what a lot of you guys think in the comments. By the way, with a magazine tube, the bullets would typically be pointing up, but I don't wanna shoot any airplanes out of the sky today, so we're going down into the ground. I don't think this is gonna go off, but maybe I'm wrong, let's see. Nope. All right, let's see if we've got a mark on our primer. Barely, barely just left a tiny little mark. So it did hit it, but not nearly hard enough to actually set it off. All right, next I'm gonna try a 762 by 54R. You can see these have a big rim around the back of the shell casing and they actually fit perfect right into that tube. So I'm gonna hang the second one up above it and we'll see if we can get it to go off. I just don't think it's, you know, going fast enough or hitting it hard enough to actually set the primer off. And you can see these are some extremely pointy bullets. The only problem is that rim could get caught on the top of our pipe and not let it fall, but we'll try. All right, let's try this one. The rim of that shell casing hung up on our pipe and now it's just sitting there and if I touch it, it's gonna fall, which I don't really want to happen with me standing right there. I'm gonna try to shoot the pipe and just wiggle it enough to get that thing to fall. I'm hitting it. All right, the bullet fell and it did not go off. All right, let's pull these out and see what they look like. So you can see our metal cap that we have on the bottom. So that one definitely punched it better. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's this one right here. Definitely punched that primer, but not enough to actually set it off. Close though. All right, this is a six foot metal pipe, also a half inch, the same size as our other one. And I've never seen a magazine tube this long. I don't know about you guys, but I'm gonna see if this will give it enough speed to actually set that bullet off. Go ahead and put our first one in. This is the same bullet that was on the bottom. 
That's a long way down. Fire in the hole. And I heard that one fall all the way down. Still didn't set it off. Well, I think it's safe to say this is not as big of a risk as I thought it was because I'm trying to make this accident happen and I still can't do it. <laughs> With pointy rifle bullets that you typically don't find in magazine tubes. All right, let's try this. Nope. Yeah, so that was dang near a free fall directly onto the primer and it still didn't hit it hard enough to set it off. So I don't think, I mean, I'm not gonna say it's impossible, anything's possible, um, and I'm sure it's probably happened at some point, but very unlikely that you're gonna get a negligent discharge just from two bullets hitting each other in a magazine tube like that. Unless they're really big and heavy, it doesn't have enough force to punch that primer all the way. Well, I was hoping the smaller calibers would work and it wouldn't come to this, but I just know I'll get raked in the comments if I don't at least try it. So here it is, the 50 BMG. So this is about as heavy and sharp as any bullet there is. If this don't work, nothing probably would. So we've got our 50 caliber pipe and the cartridge fits like a glove inside that tube. So it should go straight down. And I've actually got a cap that I'm gonna put on the bottom that has a hole in it. So it kind of allows our bullet to stick out just a little bit and hopefully allow some of that pressure to divert downward instead of just blowing out the side. So I'm gonna surround this thing with sandbags and hide behind my railroad tie wall and see if we can get a successful primer strike. Finally, and there it is. You can see that bullet sticking out of the bottom. <laughs> That's sketchy. This is the first one that I feel like has a decent chance of working, which is why I'm hiding behind a sandbag wall. All right, here we go. Nope, didn't work. Wow. There was a mark on the primer, so it did hit. We're gonna try it one more time. It worked. <laughs> yes! I can't even begin to tell you how happy I am. I've been working on this for two days and I finally got it to work. You could see me flinch in the video because I wasn't expecting it to go off and it actually did. So this is insane. You can see where our pull was buried. I hope you guys can see the crater. <laughs> it just blew the ground apart underneath it and actually the pole left the ground and you can hear it in the video. It was in the air for three or four seconds. and then landed over here. So the bottom is completely blown off. It looks like those bullets did actually shoot out the bottom of it and just blew the metal cap clean off of that thing. I highly doubt I'm gonna be able to find them because I'm sure they're pretty deep into the ground. Um, we've got shell casings everywhere. Every time I do videos out here, I find a million shell casings. Um, but yeah, I don't think I'll find any of our 50 cal bullets. We probably killed some earthworms in the process. There's a surviving earthworm. Lucky little guy. I mean, it blew that thing into the air probably 20 feet. I wish I had a camera capturing that. I just didn't expect it to launch the pole out of the ground like that. And it actually sounded weird. Nowhere near as loud as a 50 cal, but the thud was incredible. Like I could feel it vibrate my feet over there where I was sitting, probably because it was underground and a lot of the noise didn't go, but the vibration was still the same. And obviously <laughs> it was packing a punch, that's for sure. Our pole is kind of bent as well. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's definitely got a little bend in it right about there. Uh, that was not there before and our shell casings are still in there but because the poles bent they won't come out oh that's a bullet so i took a push rod to this thing to try and get the shell casings out and i got a little surprise so that is a 50 cal bullet stuck in the primer of the shell casing underneath it now that's a chain reaction <laughs> Boy, and it is in there. I can't get it out. 
There goes our bullet. And we bent our push rod. And there it is, the 50 cal bullet that was stuck in the primer of the one underneath it. And look what it did to the tip of that bullet completely reshaped it. So what I didn't tell you guys is what I did to make that work. So I actually put a second bullet on top of the first one at the bottom of our pipe and then dropped a third one on that. So this is probably bullet number two that was hit by the third one and it went into the first one, if that makes sense. And that is absolutely incredible. And unfortunately, our shell casing is stuck in that tube and I have a feeling it's never coming out of there. So there's your answer. I guess if you're using sharp, heavy 50 cal bullets and a lever action rifle, you could absolutely cause a chain reaction of NDs. But other than that, it's probably unlikely. I won't say it's impossible. I'm sure it's happened before. Um, but most mag tube guns don't use sharp spear point bullets, probably for that exact reason. But either way, very interesting, and I'm so stoked that I finally got one to work. <laughs> all right, guys, there you have it. I really hope you all enjoyed this video as much as I did. Obviously, a lot of it was trial and error because 95% of what I did was a complete failure, but we did finally get some cool results there at the end. And it's just cool to see a chain reaction of 50 cals like that. So we had one shoot straight into the ground, the other one shoot into that one's primer, and then the third one obviously didn't have you know anything hitting it it probably just popped out of the top of the tube shell casing and all either way you guys asked for it so i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please let me know down in the comments below as always hit that like button for me guys i'd really appreciate it thank you all for watching and i'll see you next time